back to another video. Uh, I've got a couple of pieces I'm going to be working on today. As you can see, I've got uh, some paper taped down for us here. And my this is my inspiration. This is uh, a piece that I did yesterday. And so I'm going to be using this as inspiration um, for today. And I'm also doing a little bit of experimenting. I have a couple of different kinds of paper. One is um, a hot pressed watercolor and the other one is a uh, Strathmore mixed media. So I'm going to try to see um, how they compare to one another because I would like to do more work on uh, paper uh, when it comes to mixed media and collage and all that sort of thing. So I wanted to kind of test these guys and see how they held up. Um, so I also did put clear gesso on both of these, just FYI. Um, yesterday when I was working on this other piece, uh, I used gel medium to glue the collage down. And, um, I don't know, it like really soaked in the paper and I didn't get things to really act like I wanted them to. So we'll, we'll try the gesso out today. I'll start with a little stamping in the background. Uh, now I don't know that I'll be able to stamp over the gesso, the clear gesso. We'll see. Hopefully. All right. So far, so good. I I better let it dry before I start trying to smear it. There. So far, so good. So I'm just working on a little series. And I had this uh, shabby chic vintage kind of vibe. I thought we'd just go with it. So I didn't use any color palette picker, co color catalog or palette picker today. It's going to look really good. It'll give a lot of interest in the background. Think. Think, think. I've already got a mess left out here from yesterday. Oh, by the way, that was archival ink. Uh, I don't want that to move around while we put stuff on top of it. All right, let me set this real quick with a heat gun. Okay. That is all dry. Now I'm going to get out some of these uh, papers I have for collage. And I was just going to kind of show you some of the stuff that I had picked out. Um, some of these are printables. And you can see on like these, these have been jelly printed on top of, which I think is really fun. That's fun to do with uh, scrapbook paper too. Like if you don't really like um, a particular page, if you jelly print on it, they turn out amazing. I'm going to use probably part of this printable as well. And I've got some little snippets of uh, avocado dyed paper, which is a good color. So I'll probably use some of that. And then I really love um, this printable. I don't know where it came from, but I love it. 
So I'm thinking this will be more toward the top. It'll be something that you can still see. So what I'm going to do is put down some collage, like pieces that I don't care if they get completely covered up. And then we'll save our really good pieces for like the top layers, maybe after we add some paint. So that's all dry, or at least mostly dry. Something that I am noticing is that the um, watercolor paper is more buckled, actually, than the mixed media paper. We'll see how they wind up drying, but um, yeah, that's kind of surprising. All right, so um, let's get some paint out. And I didn't use this color yesterday, but um, it's called Milky White Acrylic Paint. I really love how this kind of um, super pale yellowy color is over there mixed with the pink. I don't know, just something about that makes me happy. <laughs> so I'm going to... Uh, use a little bit of this color. I'm going to put a few of my paints out and um, we'll see how that looks. I'm excited because I think that's going to turn out good. And then I'm going to use uh, Titan Mars Pale and Light Magenta for the pinks. I kind of mix these two as one. The magenta is kind of dark and the other one is kind of light <laughs> but we put them together and they turn out pretty good so those will be my pinks and then for the green I'm using this Green, gray, um, also a Liquitex color. And I think somewhere I'm going to sneak in a tiny bit of this aqua color. Um, just for a tiny little pop somewhere. We'll see. Depends on how brave I am. I'm going to put it out here though so I remember. <laughs> Oh, and gesso. I don't know. I guess you guys can't see my palette very good. It's actually not a palette. <laughs> this 
it's funny it came from uh the dollar tree it was like a desk organizer or something i'm like shoot look at that it's got two little compartments up at the top you could mix liquids in i'm like that's a perfect palette all right so let's see here let's do a bit of gesso first and i am just going with the palette knife i'm just gonna do a little Random applying of paint. I like to cover some of my edges. We'll kind of start there. Yeah, I'm kind of wanting to cover up some of that because it's too far out for my liking. And I found some mulberry paper. I don't know if I mentioned that. I put that in there. Yeah, I like using the palette knife because you can kind of go over the textured areas and get some nice little highlights with gesso. Take that grunge back a little bit. Just so it looks on there. And uh, this kind that I have in the uh, bottle, the liquidy kind, this is uh, Liquitex Professional. It's um, not completely opaque. So it when it dries, you can still kind of see through it, which is cool. All right. Let's, I'm going to use a small little brush here. Let's go in and put a little bit of this milky white color. I'm going to try to leave some of these elements to poke through, like um, from the stamping. I want some of that to show through. And then, uh, you know, also random bits of these papers. And I think that's what really makes it interesting. And there's no method to my madness here. I'm just kind of going around and adding color. Really, I do like this milky color. So far, I'm liking the idea that uh, of gesso in the page, paper ahead of time. Seems like the when I was using the matte medium uh, or the what is that matte gel that um i'm sorry all my brain is not working uh, like it didn't soak in as much and so the paper seemed to, like it dried a little faster because it didn't soak down into the paper as much as it would without all right let's Decide where we want some of this green.
getting some of that green gray color. It seems dark, doesn't it? Wet my finger. Well, I kind of I need a wipe. Man, I really need one now. Let me put that back down so I don't waste it. <laughs> Let's see, because we used that gesso. Yeah, we should be able to just get over that. That's ugly. Smear stuff around, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Smearing stuff. All right, let's. Hmm. We, oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. So I have this super small little gel plate here. And this is a fun way to put a little paint on without it looking like, you know, I guess without having brush strokes on it. Very organic way, I guess you could say. Okay. I'll put this in water, I guess. Mm, this is going to be a bit much, I think. So, pick some up and put it back on the plate because it's still wet. Gesso here. Probably gonna make the biggest mess ever. Gesso to the rescue. Not the exact color that I used yesterday. What did I use yesterday? I think it was actually this uh, sage blue from Blick. So I think maybe we'll just go back to that. Yeah, that's lighter. I think that was just too dark.
I'll try to cover that up. Line it up as much as possible. Is that just my thing? Oh, mess. It'll actually probably look really good later after it dries. Pink in there. And mix these two. Let some water. Pretty good pink. Let's see, I'll just use this. It's good.
All right, I got uh, that first layer dry. Yeah, this paint, this milk white paint is pretty uh, plasticky looking. So I'm going to wind up having to coat that with some matte medium. I'm just trying to look at these and kind of get an idea of what's next. It's definitely going through the uh, awkward teenage phase for sure. All right, let's see. We need to do something with this. Let's. Let's see here. Get a little more just so we're gonna wipe this out basically and start start this corner over. All right, That's, I'm going to put a little pink up in this corner. Let's see. I'm wet my finger and get one of my um, Neocolor 2's. See, this is the um, rose colored one. Add a little pink in here. And then you could also use like matte medium or matte gel and work that in there and that seals it in and makes it permanent. Little more of this milk color up here.
All right, let's add some little pops of that mint color I was talking about. This is a pit pen, Faber Castell pit artist pen, and it has uh, India ink in it. So I am going to try to find a couple of places that we might want to add little pops of color. And we should be able to blend this in, kind of smudge it out over the top of our uh, gel medium that we had. If it was just the paper and the paper wasn't sealed, it wouldn't work. I just want to add just fun little surprises of color. See how light that is? That, that looks nice. I like it. So I'm close to the edge of that tape up there. So it'll look amazing when we peel the tape off. I'm liking it. And see, we don't add very much, just a little bit. I think that'll really help set it off later on. No, I gotta be careful on top of this gesso because it the white gesso might really stick to it. Okay, I think that looks really nice. I just kinda go around and put it here and there just to make the eye travel around the page looking for more of it. Okay, now Let's see, we need something interesting going on. Let's do some, uh, what do you call this stuff? Bubble wrap. That's some white. That's good. It gives good interest to the page. Ooh, that looks good. Let's see, let's add a little more paint. Try not to get too carried away here. A little random bubble here and there. I know it looks like a hot mess right now. It does, it does. But 
That's like when you really have to push yourself just to keep going. Because you look at it in the middle and think, oh my gosh, what a mess I have made. And it looks like there's no coming back from it. But that is just what we call the ugly stage. That means it's not finished yet. And everybody has it. You're not alone. Do just a tiny bit more. Wish I'd had some smaller jelly print. Jelly print. <laughs> Bubble wrap. All right. This is driving me crazy. I got to put one more bubble dot. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to go through with my little bitty Posca pen in white and just do some scribble writing. And it'll be very light, so it'll be hard to see, but this adds a teeny bit of something. Uh, my pen is not really working that great. not a bright white yeah so you can't really see that all right i think i got it working a little better Yeah, it's super, super subtle. I think it adds such a pretty touch when you can just barely see it. All right, what's next? What is next? I need to start thinking about building up the next layer and All right, one thing I like to do um, when I get stuck sometimes is just to add another little piece of collage. Sometimes that seems to start new ideas so i am going to add this little piece right here let me just put some of this gel medium on there and i'm kind of liking these dark um dark edges that's on a couple of these printables because I kind of took that yesterday when I did this other piece and um, you know kind of went with it and took a um, like a burnt umber no raw umber uh, what do you call those ink tents and kind of went around the outside edges of those and kind of reinforced it a little uh, so I'm probably going to do that around here because I think that'll really bring those layers to the top. 
So we will do a little bit of that. And then sometimes that also helps me, um, you know, decide then how close we are to being done. You know, it gives me an idea of uh, what else it would take to finish it. going to go through with the ink tints and just kind of outline any area that I want to reinforce. You could use a Stabilo All. I don't know if they make that in different colors. Uh, I would love to have one in like a raw umber or a sepia. So let me know if y'all know if they have that because that would be right up my alley. Let's see. Do some down here. There went the pencil. We'll just throw it on the ground. <clears throat> Come down here like this. I just like using this little water brush. I don't have to keep dipping in my water. See how it made that just pop up off the page? So, I was looking at this one. And I left the top open, which I might do here as well, because I don't know that I want to have it boxed in. So, I think... We'll leave that top open for now. We'll look and see kind of how things are looking here in a little bit. Let's do this one.
All right, so I think it's looking pretty good so far. Um, I went ahead and picked out some little uh, elements that I thought would be good for the focal point. Um, I basically was just kind of, you know, making these to resemble this one that I did. So uh, maybe they can all be together as a series. Anyway, I thought something along these lines with that one, and then I had also done this same thing for here. Maybe up here a little bit, they can kind of lay out. All right, so let me uh, glue these down. I'm going to use matte gel for these as well. So I will glue these down and uh, come back once they're dry. Okay, I got all that glued down. I forgot to mention that these were just, uh, these leaves were just die cuts. And uh, the pink is avocado dyed paper. And the other two is actually just some scrapbook paper. And then I had uh, this little cardboard box came from this little, um, like a uh, facial moisturizer or something like that. It was inside the packaging. So it's, trash is such a gold mine. <laughs> Don't throw away your trash. It's not trash. Um, so I just basically did the same thing there that I did over here. So it still needs something else. I need to go around it, I think, and add some shading. And then I also feel like, see this little bit of orangey brown color? I feel like if there was just a little bit of that here and there, that it would really start to bring it to life. So I may regret this, but I'm going to add a little. I have this um, raw umber pit pen, kind of like I did that turquoise one earlier, that mint color. But uh, yeah, I'll just run that over there and blend it in a little bit. That looks really good. Yeah. So sometimes it just needs like a little bit of more of a certain color or maybe another little element. You can kind of tell, like, you'll know when it's finished. It looks really good. All right, let me. You don't have very long to be able to blend these in, but or blend them out. Uh, but you do have to make sure that it's over the top of some uh, gel medium, or um, the whole blending thing won't work. It'll just soak right into the paper. But I had put gesso down and a bunch of gel medium glue in these. Uh, collage down. Okay, and then I'm just going to go through with my ink tints again and go around and do some shading around the leaves, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just went around the outside uh, edges with that ink tints, 
and uh, gave it a good shading but I didn't go like on the inside of these little skeleton leaves I'd be there all day I think so I don't know I'm thinking that I'm gonna go ahead and pull the tape and uh, then I can probably get a better uh, idea you know if I need to maybe add something else so I'm thinking about putting a little gold on there like I did uh, that other piece. So will you guys let me know, like, I'm curious, what is your favorite media? Um, what is your favorite thing that you like to work with? Or what, what do you work with most of the time? Are you mostly, a, you know, acrylic paint person do you put everything together mixed media or watercolor mostly art journaling you know just I'm curious and I've got more videos um, I'm gonna sit down and record and so I was just curious of what you guys like to do and because I like to make content that is interesting for you guys and pertains to you so that would help me out a lot if you don't mind let me know what you want to see I'm not an illustrator <laughs> I cannot draw realistic things and then look like anything realistic so I will just mention that these uh, are looking so much better. Whoa, that's tearing. Once you peel the tape on there, man, they look so much better. Okay, I'm going to warm that up a little bit with the heat gun. I don't know why. That one piece is really wanting to stick. Okay, that took me a second. I got a little owie here. I have to put something on there. I put a little matte medium. Actually, I'll just do it right now while I'm thinking about it. Um, all right, so I really, I really love the edges, like those are very yum scrum, I like those a lot, but I think we need just a little bit of gold, so you know, we'll have to do that. This uh, matte gel is good stuff. It really is. Yeah. Look, you can't even really tell. That's awesome. Okay. No, it's Liquitex matte gel. Works great for glue and heavy stuff together too. All right, what is this? Oh, I like, I really, yeah, they really need something, something else. I was thinking about some gold leafing. <sighs> but I didn't do it for this one. I don't know. I may just do the same, the same thing on here, which all I did was take a um, palette knife and wipe part of that off because it's got a bunch.
Let's put some on. Not too bad. I need some ground here. We have one, two, three. And here we have four. I don't know. I just try to do odd numbers. Oh. Look here, guys. Look at all of that. That is so good. Right there. Oh. I like it a bunch. All right, guys, here we are. I really like those little pops in there of that mint color. I think that made quite a bit of difference. And I think they turned out cute. Cute, cute. Kind of wish I had some gold something another on the, um, the leaves themselves. I feel like they're kind of flat. I don't know if you guys can see these. But anyway, here is all three. Let me know which is your favorite. One, two, or three. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I sure appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will catch you on the next video. Bye, y'all. Sorry, I forgot to uh, mention real quick that about the paper. So this is the Strathmore Mixed Media paper. It's got a little bit of warping on it. This one is uh, Fabriano Hot Press watercolor paper. And they both really are about the same. I can't really tell that one's better than another. I feel like the mixed media paper wants to lay flatter. So, and it's also a bit wider, but it did tear a little bit too when we took the tape off. So, I don't know. I, I might try to use that uh, Strathmore paper a little more in the future. Anyway, I just thought I'd mention that since I was testing it. All right, now bye.